Hello, my name is Keshwani. <coughs> That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. I have been solving math problems for GMAT out of this book here, the GMAT Review, the official guide. If you do not own this book, you can purchase it at MBA.com. The book that I'm holding in my hand is the 11th edition, and they've just come out with the 12th edition. 12th edition is probably what you want to buy. But the problems in both the books are pretty much the same, uh, same problems. But still buy the newest, uh, newer edition that is available, why not? The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 184, problem solving, number 232, in this older version, the 11th edition. You will find the exact same problem, you will find the exact same problem, for which I'm going to use this tag, I'm going to insert both of the tags, GMAT dash 12E for the 12th edition, problem, uh, page 183, problem solving number 215. The same problem that is page number two, 232 on page 184 appears in the new version on page 183 as problem number 215. Let's take a look at it. It says if if 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals if 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals 1 over x plus 2 x plus 4 rather then the question simply is what could be the value of x? The, the, the keyword here is what could be the value. They're not saying what must be the value. They're simply asking what could be the value. And they give you some choices here, obviously. Zero. Negative one. Negative two. Negative three. And negative four. Let's take a look at it. It's an algebraic problem. And if you've been watching my clips in the past, then by, by now you should know that there are two ways of solving this problem. One is what I call the classical way, the orthodox way, the traditional way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the academic way, the proper way, the way that will make your math teacher very proud if he or she were to take a look at the work. Unfortunately, your math teacher will not have the opportunity of admiring your work for the GMAT. So forget about the bloody academic work. The smart thing to do is to do find a quick and dirty way, which is the second method. Quick and dirty way, which is a bit, bit unconventional. I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way that I that, that, that I would use here, that I use when I solve this problem first. And then if you insist, if you're hell-bent on solving the problem in a proper way, I'm going to redo it in the academic way. So let me show you the quick and dirty way first. The very first thing you have to realize is that if you have a number, and if you divide, let me change the color. If you have a number, and if you divide it by zero, then any number, divided by zero, is undefined. It's undefined. Try, try doing it on your calculator. Pick any number that you like. Divided by zero, and you will get an error message. It's undefined. It's, it's infinity. It's, it's it's not something real. It's infinity. It's undefined, and therefore we cannot deal with it. it uh, for example, here, if x were zero, this quantity will become undefined. This entire quantity will become undefined, which tells me that x cannot be zero. This answer is wrong. This one tells me that if x were negative one, if x were negative one, this quantity will become zero. One over zero again will be undefined. Answer cannot be negative 1. Same thing here in this quantity here. X cannot be negative 4. X cannot be negative 1. X cannot be 0. So they give you 5 answer choices. 3 of them are simply nonsensical. They are simply uh, silly, strange, idiotic, whatever you want to call it. It cannot be 0 because this will make this quantity undefined. It cannot be negative 1 because negative 1 plus 1 will be 0. That will make this quantity undefined. It cannot be negative 4. So the answer choice is either negative 2 or negative 3. So what I did was, all I did was, and of course in a real exam I wouldn't be writing all of this thing down, you just look at it, 
in a matter of seconds you realize that these three these three answer choices are not going to work. It's answer is either negative two or negative three. So all I did was I took one of the answer choices and see if it works or not. I put in negative two. Why negative two? Because it happens to be the first one. No, no, no other reason. So let's put let's put negative two into it. Let me re rewrite the whole thing again. If I put negative 2 in there, I get 1 over negative 1 over negative 2 minus 1 over negative 2 plus a 1 equals 1 over negative 2 plus a 4. Let's see what it boils down to. 1 over negative 2 is just a negative half. And then a negative 2 plus a 1 is negative 1. So here we end up with negative 1 over negative 1 equals 1 over negative 2 plus a 4 is just 2. And what does that boil down to? 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. This negative 1 and this negative will become positive. So it becomes negative 1 plus 1 equals 1. 1 minus negative half is half. It works. Negative 2 works. That's it. That's your answer. That's all. That's how I did it. That's, that's all. And of course, again, I wouldn't be writing everything, all these things in detail in the real exam. But of course, I'll have to do some work. Now I'm going to show you very quickly the, the proper way, the academic way, if you like. I need the room here, so I'm going to erase the answer choices. I'm going to redo it. Now, algebraic way is only for those people who are very conversant in algebra, who are very comfortable in algebra, who are very skilled in algebra. Who can solve the problem in the algebraic way in a timely manner and in, and, and correctly? If you can do solve the problem in the algebra, but it's taking you three four minutes, it's worthless. And if you try to do it in two minutes and you get it wrong, it's also worthless, obviously. So algebra is a tricky thing; it's not meant for everybody. So I'm going to do it in the algebraic way, but I'm, I'm not going to explain to you every single step as to how to do it with the algebra because if that's the case, if you if you're having trouble understanding it, then you're not cut out for it. Just do it this way. That's all. So let's do it with the algebra. The common denominator is simply x plus x plus 1, uh, rather x times x plus 1. So on the top we get x plus 1 minus an x. There you go. And then this x cancels out with this x. So we end up with 1 over x times x plus 1. 1 over x plus 4. If you cross multiply, if you cross multiply, we end up with x times x plus 1. Or rather, let's not make it complicated as cross multiply, just take the reciprocal of both sides, same thing. If I open the parentheses, I get x squared plus an x. On the other side, we have x plus 4. And then, this x cancels out with this x, and we end up with x squared equals to 4. And this is where the parts get tricky, because people, are, if you're sitting there and saying if x squared equals 4, then x equals 2, 2 is not one of the answer choices. That's the part where some people will, will fall for it. You have to keep in mind that if x squared is 4, then x could be either plus or minus 2. Because the square of both quantities, the square of both quantities, plus or minus 2, the square of both of those quantities equals positive 4. And there you go, your answer was negative 2, which was answer choice, which was uh, answer choice C. And that's all. I hope you found this helpful. If you wish to get hold of me, to hire me for personal private tutoring, I'm located in the state of Connecticut. Or if you wish to buy my DVDs or the solution manuals to these problems, 
in any of these cases, if you wish to communicate with me, go to my website at www.preppreppreppf4r4gmat.com and send me an email. Alright, thank you.